Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Neither the Conservatives nor Labour are being honest over their tax and spending plans. That's according to economists from an influential think tank. The Institute for Fiscal Studies has criticised both parties' policy proposals, saying they fail to address the long-term challenges facing the country. Well, our economics editor, Kamal Ahmed, is here. So, Kamal, why are they being so critical? Well, I think, Rita, there are two big reasons. Firstly, do the numbers add up? And secondly, have they been honest about the big challenges, for example, the rising cost of social care? And on both, the IFS is frankly not convinced. Let's think about the Conservatives first. Can they really drive through those spending cuts they say they still want to do? Those cuts in in-work benefits. The IFS says that their proposals on the NHS budget, for example, are challenging. Can it really be delivered? And then for Labour, the issue is that big idea, the tax rises it wants to drive through, £49 billion of tax rises. The IFS suggests that they'll only get £40 billion, a £9 billion shortfall and actually the impact won't just be on the rich but it will actually be on lots more people than Labour suggests. Now manifestos are important because in this election they have laid out two very different views of the economy so they're worth reading and looking at but I think voters need to be aware that some of those detailed promises in the manifestos won't always come true. Come on, thank you. Now, the think tank, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, has said both the Conservatives and the Labour Party aren't being honest about the economic consequences of their manifesto proposals. It didn't look at the manifestos of the Lib Dems, UKIP and other parties. The IFS warned that the Tories' pledges to boost NHS spending cuts may well be undeliverable, and Labour's plans for taxing the rich and big business include factual mistakes. Here's our business editor, Siobhan Kennedy. Arts and crafts has got political at this school in North London. Kids breaking up for half term, not heading to the park, but to a demo about cuts to come. It's got so bad, parents here have been asked to chip in to fund services. The reason we're doing it is because things that are really important for kids, like having whiteboards that work in the classroom, like being able to do school swimming, like being able on residential trips, are simply things that we can't afford. Frankly, it seems ridiculous that we're going to be in a situation where these kids are going to be growing up and they're going to be have a less of a good education than we had when we were at the school age. Behind the scenes, the headmistress has just closed her finances for next year and the numbers don't look good. We've looked at every single budget line to try and minimise expenditure. For us, by 2020, we're going to be losing £123,000 at this school, um, which is a significant percentage of our income. Education funding is just one area where the two parties differ markedly in their manifestos. But according to the Institute of Fiscal Studies, what the two parties do have in common is their dishonesty to voters when it comes to explaining how their policies will impact the economy. The IFS questioned Labour's claim to raise £49 billion from taxes on business and the well-off, instead saying they'd be lucky to raise £40 billion. And those taxes would eventually hit everyone through lower wages, higher prices and lower returns on pensions. On the Conservatives, it said the £8 billion of spending on the NHS would extend the lowest period of rises to 12 years. And schools would see a real terms fall in spending by nearly 3% per pupil by the end of the Parliament. Labour said it believes the IFS has underestimated the revenue-raising effectiveness of its tax changes, but said it recognised the potential for uncertainty, which is why it's allowed headroom in its plans. In its statement, the Tories didn't address the IFS criticisms at all, but echoed the report saying that taxes would rise to their highest ever peacetime level if Jeremy Corbyn gets into Downing Street. Labour wish to increase tax significantly in order to spend more and the big risk under them is that the tax raisers won't get in the money that they want. Under the Conservatives you'd see continued cuts to day-to-day -day spending by government and the risk with them is that they wouldn't be able to deliver the public services that we want. But these school kids don't need economists to tell them how they're feeling. Their own manifesto analysis, hand-painted on placards, does just the same trick. <laughs> 